यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजना यमुनातीरावन चारी यमुनातीरावन चारी जय राध माधव कुंज विहारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजना यमुनातीरावन चारी यमुनातीरावन चारी जय राध माधव कुंज विहारी जय राध माधव कुंज विहारी जय कृष्ण बल राम जय कृष्ण बल राम कृष्ण बल राम जय कृष्ण बल राम जय गौरणिताय जय गौरणिताय गौरणिताय जय गौरणिताय जय जय प्रभु पात प्रभु पात प्रभु पात प्रभु पात ृंद <laughs> ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत की जय श्री श्री कृष्ण बलराम की जय श्री श्री गौर निताय की जय जगद्गुरु शील प्रभुपाद की जय निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल <coughs> ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो वन चैप्टर थ्री कृष्णा इज द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल इनकारनेशन टेक्स्ट नंबर ट्वेंटी अवतारे षोडश मे 
अवतारे षोडशमे अवतारे षोडशमे पश्यन् ब्रह्म द्रुहो नृपान् पश्यन् ब्रह्म द्रुहो नृपान् पश्यन् ब्रह्म द्रुहो नृपान् त्रिहि सप्त कृत्वा कुपिता त्रिसप्त कृत्वा कुपितो त्रिसप्त कृत्वा कुपितो निक्षत्राम आकरोत महीम निक्षत्राम आकरोन महीम निक्षत्राम आकरोन महीम अवतारे शोडशमे पश्यन् ब्रह्मद्रुहो नृपान् त्रिसप्तक्रित्वाह कुपितो निक्षत्राम करोन महीम अवतारे शोडशमे पश्यन् ब्रह्मद्रुहो नृपान् त्रिसप्तक्रित्वाह कुपितो निक्षत्राम करोन महीम Avatare in the incarnation of the Lord. Shoda Sami the sixteenth Pasyan seeing Brahmadruha disobedient to the orders of the Brahmanas. Nirpan the kingly order. Trisapta thrice seven times. Kritvaha had done, Kupitaha being engaged, Nik Nihi negation, Shatram the administrative class, Akarot did perform, Mahim the earth, translation and purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. In the sixteenth incarnation of the Godhead, the Lord as Bhrugupati annihilated the administrative class Kshatriyas 21 times being angry with them because of their rebellion against the Brahmanas, the intelligent class. Kindly repeat, in the 16th incarnation of the Godhead, the Lord as Bhrugupati annihilated the administrative class Kshatriyas 21 times being angry with them because of their rebellion against the Brahmanas, the intelligent class, purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Kshatriyas or the administrative class of men are expected to rule the planet by the direction of the intelligent class of men who give direction to the rulers in terms of the standard Shastras or the books of revealed knowledge. The rulers carry on the administration according to that direction. Whenever there is disobedience on the part of the Kshatriyas or the administrative class against the orders of the learned and intelligent Brahmanas, the administrators are removed by force from the post and, arrange <coughs> Sorry. and arrangement is made for better administration. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya 
ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधरा श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मूक कौति वाचा पंगु लंघयते गिरी यकृपातम वंदे श्रीगुर दीनतारण <coughs> recently there has been a lot of uh, discussion going on in the news about Jawaharlal Nehru University JNU as it is popularly known as this is a university in delhi which is famous for all the wrong reasons so recently on the walls of the college of the university some students have uh, made some graffiti they have painted the walls saying brahmins leave the campus we are coming for you there will be blood brahmin uh, bharat chodo etc and so this has caught the attention of the media and uh, they are all questioning who are the people who have done this why are they doing this why are they targeting a certain community we should become free from caste etc etc and all those kind of things <clears throat> some professors have gone and complained to the university also and the vc has promised action will be taken against those responsible etc etc all these discussions are going on so jnu is known to be a university where anyone who goes to study there they are brainwashed with this understanding that all the problems that india is facing today whether it is poverty whether it is uh, unemployment whether it is economic depression whether it is uh, caste discrimination all of this is because of brahmins in fact all the pass outs of jnu you can see how they are all very talented people who study in jnu unfortunately but then they are brainwashed into this kind of thinking they they write articles about how the silicon valley has been invaded by these uh, people who wear a thread on their shoulder and the westerners don't know the power that these people wield on the account of that thread hanging from their shoulders you know these are the kind of articles that they write very funny actually in one sense when you look at it so as if so they are saying is these people are now wearing t-shirt and pant you cannot make out externally who they are what they are and these people have now infiltrated silicon valley and they are spread everywhere so the 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 you know all the people who are brainwashed like this their thinking is that there is this group of scheming brahmins who are wanting to control the software world and and also all the administrative posts and they want to influence the policies and this is what is creating all the problems in the country nothing can be further from the truth than this the reality is that the truth is of course that some few hundred years back the brahmin class used to wield a lot of uh, power and influence over the society and uh, they misused that power and that authority to to uh, exploit the lower caste people but of course it was not only the brahmins who were involved in this the other higher caste the kshatriyas vaishyas they were also involved in this it's not one class but then currently if you look at the current day world 
what are the brahmins today the brahmins you will find them there is one uh, very prominent uh, politician in the country whose great grandfather was a brahmin kashmiri pandit now this man he claims that he is a janivdhari brahman and you will see his favorite dish is some some uh, fish item and he will go to the non veg restaurant and eat chicken also and he calls him calls himself a janivdhari brahman his great grandfather was a kashmiri pandit smoker drunkard womanizer is a brahman so today's world if you look at brahmins there are no more brahmins where is uh, you know the in the in the bhagavad gita the qualities of a brahmana are given satyam saucham kshama daya asikyam brahma karma swabhavajam the the brahmin brahmanas are supposed to have so many quali- qualifications they are supposed to be very detached always engaged in study of the vedic scripture understanding the origin from which we all have been have been coming out how we are related to the supreme lord what is the uh, process to get mukti moksha these are the activities of a brahmana but today's brahmanas if you see none of them ever engage in any of these activities they will be meat eaters drunkards smokers and uh, womanizers and all these kind of things and they will pass themselves off as brahmins simply because they have been born in a brahmin family so because of the degradation of the brahmana class because they have lost their qualities or qualifications which they are supposed to have what has happened is the whole society has become directionless the kshatriyas also have degraded the kshatriyas were supposed to rule over with the in the modes of goodness and passion but when the kshatriyas being becoming direct, directionless because of the fall down of the brahmanas they started becoming <clears throat> controlled more by the mode of ignorance and passion and they started exploit they also started exploiting the people what happened the whole monarchy has fell down so now the administration is in the hands of vaishyas and sudras they have no idea what should be the direction in which society should go what are the ideals that the society should possess what should be the goal of the human form of life they have no idea about any of these things their only goal is eating sleeping mating defending should be nicely going on that is the goal of life just like animals so this has become an animal civilization why because the brahmana class have lost their qualifications they have become degraded this degradation of the brahmana class has started not today not yesterday not 200 years back but it started 5000 years ago with the cursing of maharaj parikshit by the brahmana boy shringi from there the fall down of the brahmana started the degradation of the brahmana class started not only that you will also see in the current day society many of the brahmanas are the people those who are born in the brahmin families are the people who will be flouting all the vedic rules and regulations they will be atheists and they will be propagating all sorts of philosophies which are against the vedic philosophy they will say that whichever path you want you can take and uh, whatever you want you can do and uh, you know all kinds of uh, concocted philosophies you will find and all these people who are propagating the atheistic views and this kind of propaganda that the caste system has to be uh, all the problems are because of the caste system etc those who speak against the caste system those who speak against the vedas uh, mostly you will find they are from brahmin families so why why is this happening because in the varaha purana it is stated that rakshasah kalimashritya jayante brahma yonishu utpanna brahmana kule badhante shrotriyan krishan so the varaha purana states that all the rakshasas rakshasah kalimashritya in kaliyuga 
all the rakshasas who were inimical towards vishnu or krishna in the previous yugas but somehow they did not get killed by vishnu himself there were many asuras we all know ravana shishupala duryodhana all these demoniac people who were against vishnu or krishna and by the arrangement of the supreme lord krishna or his incarnation personally killed all of them and by being killed by krishna personally or by any of his incarnations or by any of his devotees like bhima and arjuna etc they attain salvation all these rakshasas but there were many other rakshasas who were inimical towards krishna or vishnu but who do not get killed either by krishna or his incarnation or his devotees so what happens to them so taking pity upon them krishna gave them birth in their birth to these rakshasas in the brahmana families during kali yuga with the idea that let them also get an opportunity to understand spiritual knowledge and to elevate themselves spiritually and attain moksha so rakshasaha kalima shritya in kali yuga the rakshasas jayante brahma yonishu they take birth in the brahmin families but unfortunately what happens is instead of taking advantage of such a birth and becoming devotees of vishnu and going back to god eh? what these people do utpanna brahmana kule having taken birth in the brahmin families badante shotriyan krishan they go and disturb and prevent the actual followers of the vedas from following the vedic principles now you all understand why Why, you know all these things we are seeing in the society today why all these things are happening and why the brahmana class has actually got degraded so now originally the varnashrama system in its uncorrupted form was free of exploitation of the lower classes there was no question of exploitation of the chudras or the sts sts etc there is no question of exploitation there was only a uh, only a structuring of the society such that each person according to his natural proclivities natural inclinations they are engaged in activities which are suitable to those inclinations so that people will be peaceful in whatever occupation they have so the division of brahmana brahmana kshatriya vaishya sutra was based on occupation what kind of occupation the person according to his psychology according to his mental makeup he will very peacefully without undergoing undue stress he will be able to he will be able to follow current day world there is so much stress in the society why because people have to work against their natures there is no division of the of the uh, society according to the occupation as brahmana kshatriyas vaishyas and sudras simply somebody is born in the family of a brahmana he is called as a brahmana somebody is born in a kshatriya family he is called a kshatriya etc and they are all forced to undergo the same sudra training so what happens all of them under, come under severe stress because whatever they are doing is against their natural inclination nobody has assessed what kind of education this person should be given what kind of training he should be given what kind of occupation he should engage in based on his natural inclination that kind of thought process is not there in the current education system because of which undue stress is placed on the individuals to avoid this undue stress only the division of occupations was carried out in the vedic times in the varnashrama dharma and a person simply by his birth alone cannot claim to become a brahmana kshatriya or vaisya he has to qualify himself this was very very important and the system was the brahmanas because they are the intellectual class and they are supposed to be completely engaged in no other activity than the welfare of the society ultimate welfare of the society by guiding the society how to become liberated from the cycle of birth death disease and old age within this material world that was their only occupation guidance of the society for the welfare of how to liberate everyone including the shudras vaishyas kshatriyas everyone should get liberated this was the sole occupation of a brahmana and these brahmanas would give direction to the kshatriyas administrative class 
how to administer the society so that the entire common mass of people can all get elevated spiritually this was the whole focus now if we look at today's words the verse today's verse states how in the 16th incarnation of krishna as bhrugupati or parashurama he annihilated the kshatriya class 21 times why because he became angry with them because brahma druho nrupan the kshatriyas or the administrative class rebelled against the brahmanas they stopped following their direction of how to elevate the common mass of people spiritually and they engaged simply in military aggrandizement and sense gratification so when this actually uh in the olden days before lord rama's appearance itself there was a king by the name gadhi now this gadhi had a daughter by the name satyavati this satyavati is different from the satyavati of mahabharata who was the wife of shantanu this is a different much before the mahabharata happened even before lord rama even before lord rama's time so this satyavati was a beautiful girl very qualified and there was one muni in that kingdom his name was rachika muni now this rachika muni he wanted to enter the grihastha ashram so he approached the king and he asked the king gadhi that please i want to enter into the grihastha ashram i want to marry your daughter please give your daughter in marriage to me now this gadhi he was not very keen to give his daughter in marriage to a muni to a rishi he was he wanted that his daughter should marry some king or some emperor or something like that but he did not want to openly say no to the rishi also because if the rishi gets angry he might curse him so he thought how to get out of this situation so how to get out of the situation so he told very diplomatically because kshatriyas they are expert in diplomacy so he told the rishi kamuni who was a brahmana brahmanas are straight forward satyam they are they always speak the truth even to their enemies whereas kshatriyas are diplomatic that is the way politics works so now gadi he told rishi kamuni see in our family there is a tradition there is a tradition that the boy side the groom side has to give a dowry to the girl side only then can the girl be handed over in marriage so you have to give some dowry to me then i can give my daughter to you so what is the dowry i want that whoever wants has to marry my daughter should give me as dowry 1000 horses first class horses who will be brilliant like the moon shine and each of them will have only one black ear either the right or the left one black ear and the horse should be all first class shining brightly and all that so where can you get uh, you know forget about uh, uh, bright and healthy horses even to get uh, you know even if you include the dying and weak horses also to get a horse with only one black ear from where will you get rishi kamuni understood oh the king doesn't want to give his daughter in marriage to me that's why he is making this excuse so but then rishi kamuni is a muni brahmana very highly qualified he was very uh, you know because of his austerity his tapasya and all that he was he was also very powerful so he thought okay king has told like this let us see what i can do rishi kamuni went to varuna deva and he uh, appeased varuna deva and he requested from him i want from you 1000 horses who are having this characteristic of having only one ear which is black now brahmana is coming and asking varuna has to give in dana varuna gave him in dana all these horses now rishi kamuni came back and he gave gadhi see i have brought the dowry now you hand over your daughter to me now gadhi had no excuse so he said okay take my daughter in marriage and he got his daughter satyavati married to rishi kamuni now in due course of time what happened satyavati desired to have a child so she requested her husband that i want to have a child so you should please bless me with a, with a child so rishi kamuni said okay this is it's my duty as a husband to fulfill your desire i'll definitely fulfill and it so happened at the same time that satyavati's mother gadhi and uh, 
his wife they had they did not have a son so satyavati's mother also desired that she should have a son so she also requested rishikamuni that i also want to have a son so you have to do something do some yajna by which i'll be blessed with a son rishikamuni said okay mother in law is asking and uh, wife is also asking so he said i will do one yajna for uh, getting a son putreshri kama yajna there is a yajna uh, called putreshri kama yajna those who want a son they perform that yajna they'll get a son so he said i'll perform the yajna for both of you so he made all the arrangements for the yajna and he conducted the yajna and in the yajna yajna shrishta comes so in while offering the yajna shrishta in the yajna for his wife satyavati he rishikamuni invoked the brahmana mantra because he was a brahmana whereas his wife was from a kshatriya family see even those days intercaste marriage was there so this is you know even before the time of lord rama but then it was an anuloma marriage it was not pratiloma because the husband was of a higher caste so it was okay so he wanted that my son should be a brahmana and so therefore he invoked brahmana mantras into the yajna shrishta and because his mother in law was the wife of gadi a king who was a kshatriya he invoked a kshatriya mantra so that she would get a kshatriya son and then so two oblations were prepared two uh, yajna shrishtas were prepared and the one with the brahmana mantra he gave it to his wife and told you please have this prasadam and the kshatriya mantra prasadam he gave it to his mother in law and told his mother in law you please have this and uh, through your husband you will be blessed with a son and then having finished the yajna ruchi kamani went to went to take his bath now what happened the mother in law the mother of satyavati she thought see whatever you tell a man will be always be partial to his wife so definitely whatever uh, ruchika muni has done the mantras which he has invoked into the prasadam and all that yajna shrishta and all that he must have done something better for his wife so the prasadam which i got must be inferior in some way to his wife's he would have definitely favored her after all you know it is his wife he has to he has to somewhere or the other he has to satisfy her so she thought somehow if i get my daughter's share then i can have a better son so she went to satyavati her daughter and told let us exchange the oblation so daughter said mother is asking okay exchange and both of them had <laughs> each other share now ruchik muni after his bath came back and he came to know his wife told him like this mother wanted uh, my share so i gave it and we exchanged and we had ruchik muni became angry he said what nonsense have you done i have invoked the brahmana mantra so that you will get a brahmana child and your mother uh, should get a kshatriya child and you have gone and interchange both of them what is this nonsense you have done now because of this he became very angry because of this he said your mother will get a boy who will be very learned in the vedic scriptures and you will get a boy who will be fearsome and a great kshatriya fighter now satyavati became very so no 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 please 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 uh, don't do this you know i you know we should get a brahmana boy only that this something she started crying now then ruchi kumari also cooled down and he said okay okay your son will be a brahmana but your grandson will be a big kshatriya somewhere it has to take effect no because the yajna shrishta he has he has invoked the kshatriya mantra it cannot fail so he said okay your son will be a brahmana but your grandson will be a kshatriya and so like this to ruchi kumari and satyavati was born jamadagni jamadagni became a great rishi became a great brahmana and in due course of time he married the daughter of one person called renu so he married renuka after marrying her he had many sons out of whom the youngest son he named rama now this uh, jamadagni he had a surabhi cow in his hermitage a uh, kamadenu cow kamadenu cow means you ask the cow anything it will give because uh jamadagni was a great uh, rishi he was highly accomplished therefore he had got it from the heavenly kingdom this kamadenu cow and he would take all the ghee milk etc from the cow and he would use it for daily yajnas and it so happened that this jamadagni had his ashram 
in a city which was in close to a city which was known as Mahishmati. Mahishmati is uh, located in in uh, current day Madhya Pradesh. And the king of Mahishmati was a man called Karthavirya Arjuna. His name was Arjuna. But to differentiate him from the Arjuna of Mahabharata, he is called Karthavirya Arjuna. So this Karthavirya Arjuna, somehow he had got a benediction of having 1000 arms. Very powerful he was. Very powerful, very strong. In fact, he was so strong, he had even defeated Ravana, who, was also, who also happened to be there at the same time. So this Karthavirya Arjuna, once he was coming in the forest for his expedition, he had no other work, he was simply roaming around. And he happened to come upon Jamadagni's ashrama. So, at that time, all of Jamadagni's sons had gone out into the forest for collecting whatever fruits, roots and all those kind of things. So, Jamadagni saw, oh, king has come. Now, king doesn't come alone. He will come with his retinue. There will be so many soldiers, ministers and all those people accompanying him. So, hundreds of his accompanied people accompanying him also have come. So, Jamadagni, according to the Vedic uh, scriptures, any atithi, any guest who comes to one's place has to be received very honorably, even if it is one's own enemy. Now, in this case, the king has come. So, Jamadagni um, uh, took the help of the Kamade Nukau and he made elaborate arrangement for a feast for all the king and all his uh, people, all his uh, uh, ministers and soldiers who are accompanying him. And very satisfactorily, he took care of them. Now, Karthaviri Arjuna was very puffed up because he was very powerful. So, he thought, this Kamadenu cow, such a wonderful cow, why should it be with this poor Brahmana who has no use for it? Let it be with me. So, he forcibly, without taking the permission of Jamadagni, he took away the cow. And the cow was also crying. The cow did not want to leave Jamadagni's ashram, but forcefully he took it to Mahishmati. Now, after some time, all the sons returned from there from wherever they had gone to the forest for their uh, big shower, whatever they had gone. And they all heard how this uh, Karthavirya Arjuna had come and he had taken away the cow. Now the youngest son, Rama, he became furious. Immediately what he did, he took up a bow and an, and an arrow which was there in the ashram and he took one shield and in another hand he took one parashu, an axe. And with that, on foot, all alone, he set out to Mahishmati. Now, the king Karthaviri Arjuna had just entered the, entered the fort. And then he saw from the distance, brilliant looking person, wearing deer skin, matted locks, and he is walking all alone and coming. And he could see from the demeanor of the person, you know, in one hand, uh, there is one uh, bow, and there is a quiver with arrows, and there is a shield, and there is, and there is, he is also carrying one axe. This, this person is not coming for peace. He is coming for some fight only. So, uh, Karthaviri Arjuna said, anyway, I am very powerful. Why I should go? He sent his army. So, but then Karthaviri Arjuna could sense that this person who is coming, Rama, who is, he is also not any weak person. So, he sent a good contingent to fight with this Rama who was coming. So, Rama was coming all alone. Now, this king Karthaviri Arjuna, how many... Um, uh, soldiers did he send to fight with uh, uh, fight with uh, Rama, Bhrugupati? He sent not one or ten soldiers, not even a hundred, not even a thousand. He sent a phalanx, akshavhanis of soldiers. An akshavhani consists of almost 22,000 elephants, 22,000 approximately, 22,000 uh, chariots, more than one lakh more than 1 lakh foot soldiers and about 65,000 cavalry, means uh, uh, soldiers and horses. So you can imagine this, 22,000 chariots, 22,000 elephants, 1 lakh foot soldiers and uh, 65,000 cavalry. This is what constitutes one Akshavani. So to fight one person, <laughs> Akshavani is too much. Karthavirya Arjuna sent 17 Akshavhanis to fight with Parasurama. 17 Akshavhanis. And Parasurama was so furious, he took his axe and he started whirling around in that army. 
at the speed of the mind means he was so fast nobody could see where he is only everywhere hands are flying legs are flying heads are flying uh, 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 elephants are falling down horses are falling down chariots are getting broken into pieces nobody could see what was happening at that speed he was fighting and after a little while naturally nobody can keep up that kind of speed he became a little tired parasurama so he reduced the speed and he started fighting at the speed of the wind so practically in no time the entire army of 17 akshavanis was wiped out there was a river of blood flowing everywhere when kartavirya arjuna saw this he could not brook the kind of insult this had come oh my army has demolished i'll go and fight myself so he took 500 bows because he had a thousand arms and 500 arrows simultaneously working 500 bows and arrows he came out of his out of his fort uh, aiming all the arrows at parasurama parasurama had only one bow and arrow but before uh, kartavirya arjuna with his 500 uh, arms he could release all the 500 arrows before that parasurama with only his one bow he cut down all the arrows all the bows now kartavirya arjuna was bereft of all his bows so he immediately started picking up stones trees and started attacking parasurama parasurama immediately took his took his axe and he cut off all the arms of kartavirya arjuna and then finally he beheaded him and like this he killed kartavirya arjuna now this kartavirya arjuna had 10000 sons all of them were also kshatriyas they saw the kind of devastation that was going on in the battlefield and how even their powerful father was killed so they thought if we remain here we will also get killed they ran away in fear then parasurama went caught hold of the surubi cow kamadenu cow and took her back to jamadagni's ashram and having come back he told his father what all had happened so when jamadagni heard this he told parasurama my dear son what you have done is not correct why because every uh, varna every person has a certain characteristic which makes him beautiful for a kshatriya courage and valor makes him beautiful vaisya if he does gorakshya and gives in charity he will become very beautiful that is the beauty of a vaisya the beauty of a kshatriya is to be valorous and courageous the beauty of a woman is to be chaste and faithful to her husband normally we think in current day world beauty means you have to go to the beauty parlor put a lot of makeup lipstick and then uh, false eyelashes false wig to have a long long tresses etc etc all of it is artificial but real beauty of a woman is when she is chaste and faithful to her wife the woman automatically becomes beautiful meaning she will command the respect of other men you look at mother sita everybody respects mother sita everybody takes the name of mother sita with great awe and veneration everyone considers sita as their mother why because of her chastity and faithfulness to lord rama so this is what makes a woman beautiful so similarly uh, 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 jamadagni informed parasurama that what the beauty of a brahmana is his quality of forgiving you are not a kshatriya you are a brahmana you should have forgiven him but anyway whatever happened happened you have gone and killed him so you have incurred sinful reaction on that account if you were a kshatriya and you went and killed him there would have been no sin but you being a brahmana instead of forgiving you went and killed him so therefore you have incurred sin so you have to go on pilgrimage so then parasurama for one year he went on pilgrimage to atone for the sin of killing a king and finally after one year he came back and after coming back what happened was once his mother renuka parasurama's mother had gone to the uh, had gone to the ganga to fetch some water so when she went to the river to fetch some water she happened to see one of the kings of the gandharvas chitraratha playing in the water with all apsaras when she saw this somehow in her mind in her heart a little desire awoke 
that she should also enjoy like this with Chitra Ratha. So actually she committed adultery in her mind. And uh, she became captivated by the scene of Chitra Ratha enjoying with the Apsaras in the water. And she didn't, she forgot that time was passing. And uh, at the ashram, Jamadagni was waiting for his wife to come and provide the water for carrying on the Ejna. But she forgot about time and the time for conducting the Ejna passed away. Suddenly she realized, oh my God, the time has passed away. So immediately she took, she took the water and came to the ashrama and she stood before her husband with a lowered head, shamefully because she knew that she had committed a mistake. So when Jamadagni understood that she had committed adultery in, his, in her mind, he immediately called his sons and he told them, your mother has sinned, so you please cut off her head. Now the sons, how can they cut off the head of the mother? They were like, Are, what is this father giving this kind of order? So they were all quiet. So then uh, Jamadagni saw that his sons are not carrying out his order. So he immediately called, Rama, come here, the youngest son. Immediately Parasurama came. He said, your son, my sons, your brothers have disobeyed me and your mother has sinned. Therefore, cut off all their heads. Parasurama knew the power of Jamadagni. He knew that he was not an ordinary sage. So what he did, he immediately took his axe and he cut off the heads of all his brothers and his mother. And then he stood there with folded hands before his father. So Jamadagni said, my dear son, you have pleased me. If you, 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 you can ask from me any boon you want. So Parasurama immediately replied, oh my father, I want a boon that all my brothers and my mother should come back to life and they should not remember that I have killed them. Very intelligent. So Jamadagni laughed and he became pleased with his son even more. He said, okay, it will be as you wish. And he brought them back to life. And all the brothers of uh, Parasurama and mother woke up as if they had been in deep sleep and they thought, oh, how did I fall asleep here? Anyway, we had to do our duties and they continued as if nothing had happened. So this was the power of Jamadagni and Parasurama. But then, actually, Jamadagni also committed a sin. Why? Because his wife, in her mind, she committed an adultery. So it was not such a grave sin that she had to be beheaded for it. She did not physically engage in adultery. Only in her mind, something happened. He should have chastised her and he should have corrected her and left her. But instead, he... Well, he had her killed. So, therefore, he incurred sin for this. And as a result, what happened? Few days later, when the all the sons of Jamadagni had gone out, Jamadagni was sitting in his ashrama and he was meditating upon Vishnu within his heart. That time, the sons of Kartavirya Arjuna, they came there and they saw nobody is there. Jamadagni is sitting all by himself. They immediately chopped off his head. So Jamadagni had to undergo this because he had incurred the sin of having his wife killed for a small trivial sin which was not so grave that it warranted her to be killed. So Prabhupada explains that whether it is Jamadagni, whether it is Parasharama, whether it is Kartavirya Arjuna, anybody commits a sinful activity, reaction will come. Therefore, we have to be very very careful not to engage in any sinful activity. Now, these sons, they beheaded Jamadagni, took his head and went away. Now, what happened? His mother, Parasurama's mother, Jamadagni's wife, she was crying, she was pleading with the sons of Kartavirya Arjuna, please, please, my, my husband is in meditation, please don't harm him. But they didn't listen. They cut off his head and took it away. So, when the sons came back, they saw mother is crying, father is, uh, torso is there, his head is not there. And then the mother related that this is what happened. And again, Parasurama became completely overwhelmed with anger. He immediately took a stopper, again entered into Mahishmati and there was total, you know, there was a bloodbath. All the sons of Kartavirya Arjuna he killed and still his anger did not subside. He went all over the world and wherever he found Kshatriyas, he killed them on the plea of taking revenge. For the murder of his father. Actual fact was, 
already the kshatriyas everywhere had become sinful so parashurama because he was an incarnation he was a shaktiyavesha incarnation of the lord invested with the specific power to subdue the to control the royal class of people the kshatriyas he went around the whole world 21 times he, he rid the earth of all kshatriyas because they were not following the vedic principle of being subordinate to the brahmanas taking direction from them and helping the subjects uh, uh, progress on the path of uh, liberation so after this what he did parashurama came back he joined the head of his father back to his body and he worshiped the lord vishnu and brought jamadagni back to life and then eventually jamadagni elevated himself to the saptarishi mandala and uh, <clears throat> it is said that parashurama even today parashurama he has retired he has given up his kshatriya activities and now he is living in mahindra parvata mahindra parvata it is said that currently it is in the area where cambodia is situated about uh, i think 40 50 kilometers from the famous angkor wat temple is where mahindra parvata is located so like this parashurama engaged in the activity of ridding the earth of uh, kshatriyas 21 times in his past time because they had rebelled against the brahmana class of people which was not good for the welfare of the society and of course parashurama was so old he appeared even before lord rama himself the lord rama dasarathi rama so and he met uh, lord rama and parashurama had a fight with lord rama and finally when lord rama defeated parashurama then parashurama accepted that yes you are the supreme lord and parashurama even though from lord rama's time treta yuga he continued even till dwapar yuga and he was there even during the time of mahabharata in fact even he is there even today and uh, we all know how he fought with uh, bhishma that was another past time of his not only that parashurama met krishna also but parashurama did not fight with krishna he fought with rama but krishna he directly he accepted you are the supreme personality of god he did not fight with him <laughs> so like this lord parashurama engaged in many past times and uh, he is mentioned here to be the 16th incarnation who was a shaktiyavesha incarnation invested with the specific power of uh, controlling uh, cutting down the kshatriyas who are deviated from the vedic path so whenever the kshatriyas deviate from the kshat, whenever the kshatriyas deviate from the uh, vedic path the lord descends and as krishna tells in the bhagavad gita paritranaay sadhu nam to protect the dharma samsthapanarthay to protect the vedic dharma sanatana dharma the lord descends so in kaliyuga that same lord has descended in the form of his holy name kalikale nama rupe avatar and if we simply propagate the harinama we if we simply propagate san, uh, sankirtana if we simply propagate the chanting of the hare krishna maha mantra the disobedient class of the kshatriyas can be controlled and the whole world can again become a great place where the human beings will be able to fulfill the goal of having taken the human birth to perfect their life and become free from the cycle of birth death disease old age and go back to god and so these are some of the things which we can understand from the past times of lord parashurama if uh, there are any questions or comment i'll take one question because i don't want to delay too much anybody has any question yes please prabhu you mentioned about the shringi past time yes um, a brahmana society has been degraded uh, from the curse of that incident actually yeah in that uh, propad mentions that uh, on the influence of the kali yeah uh, the brahmana boy has cursed uh, for the insignificant offense of a parishit maharaj yes in the previous chapter uh, where parishit maharaj gives the shelter to the kali in the five places yeah but he has not given any shelter in um, uh, through brahmanical uh, degradation at all mm. but when come to the uh, this 18th chapter but we uh, propad mentioned that on the influence of the kali yeah where there is no gold there is no poor irregular so how do we understand that kali has occupied the <coughs> mind of the brahmana boy so what we have to understand is that that uh, the lord in that case where uh, 
Kali took control of uh, Shringi. Although Parikshit Maharaj was so powerful, he had controlled Kali and he had not given him any place to stay. He gave him four places to stay. And apart from that, he gave wherever gold is there, five places he gave him to stay. So, the Lord, the Supreme Lord, wanted uh, Parikshit to become a medium for the advent of the Srimad Bhagavatam. As it is stated in the beginning of the Bhagavatam itself, that the Rishis, one of the questions that the Rishis put forth before uh, Sutta Goswami was that uh, Adunopete, now that Krishna has gone back to his abode, whose shelter has Dharma taken off? Because Krishna is the father of Dharma, he is the protector of Dharma. Now he has gone, he has left and gone to the spiritual world. So whose shelter has Dharma taken? So to which uh, Sutta Goswami replied that uh, Purana Kodhano Ditaha, the son of the Bhagavatam has now risen to give shelter to Dharma. So Krishna wanted Parikshit to become the medium through which the Srimad Bhagavatam would advent and give shelter to Dharma. And so for that Krishna made use of Kali to take the control of Shringi and through this he made Parikshit Maharaj a medium through which the Bhagavatam could manifest. So this was by the will of the Lord. Although Parikshit Maharaj had controlled Kali, but then the Lord willed that Shringi should become the, should become, uh, should come under the control of Kali so that the Srimad Bhagavatam could manifest. That's how we have to understand. Is that okay? So we'll stop here. Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Netai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bol.